Hello and welcome to episode, uh, what is this, four of creating a Java app to extract data from Jira. Um, now we've already coded up our first function which logs into Jira and we have no errors, which is good, but we have no output either. And I'd like output. I'd like to see the response that I got back so that I can use it as I keep developing these further things like how to parse the J session ID, my next function. I'm going to want to see the JSON and, and so I can figure out what I need to parse out of it. And I'll, uh, I'll keep using that debug output as I go through future steps here until we get to the bottom. So that's the success case, right? But I also want the failure case. And the failure case, obviously I want useful error messages, but I do want uh, it to also stop execution where the error happened. I don't want it to continue executing because each of my functions here, as they're called in order, depends on a successful result from the previous one. If I don't get that, it's going to error too, and it's going to give me an error message, and then I'm going to have to scroll all the way back up to figure out what the root of it all was, and I don't like scrolling. So those are two requirements for the failure. Each, each function will print out its own error message, simple, and then I'll stop further execution. Now I put a try-catch block in every one. Uh, well, I'll put a try catch block in every one of these functions and that will have a catch clause which will handle errors. Let's see. The simplest thing I can do is just print it out to the terminal. And obviously, you know, you'll probably be using log4j or something a little better than this, but for a proof of concept, we'll just print line. And I want to know which function erred, so I'll say error in and then this function's name is login to Jira. I could use reflection or something fancy like that, but for proof of concept, given that I only have to type these sort of thing five times, I'll type it. So, and then we'll get our message from our exception. Uh, so that's that's it. The function's printing its own error message. And to stop further execution, I could do something like an exit right here, just some system exit one or something, but I don't like, and it sounds messy, it feels messy to me. I don't like just dumping, just stopping. I'd rather have it pass its message back up to main and, and handle it. Um, pass its error status back up to main and handle it there. To do that, I need to track that an error has occurred somewhere in the application. And I'll use a boolean for that. Boolean errors have occurred. I just call it errors occurred. And I'll initialize it to false because nothing's gone wrong yet, hopefully. I've just been declaring some, some variables here. And then if not errors occurred. Execute the step. Errors occurred. Then execute this step. While the step's executing though, it might return a failure. So how am I going to return that? I think I am just going to... So all of these functions here basically are returning a string except for uh, write to file output that's returning a boolean and you know that's really just arbitrary i just said you know what i'll return a flag of success or failure as as a boolean i could return it as a string as well and make everything a string if i were to do that then i could return a string so i'd set login response equals shouted error um, and i could do that for all of these then so let me change this signature here to return a string and um, string oh there we go so now everything returns a string and um, my this is actually this output is going to be a string there we go again After I'm done running this function, I would check it and see if login response equals error. You know what? I can just make a one-liner out of this. Then we're going to set errors occurred equals true. There we go. So now we've determined that an error occurred in this function. It's printed out its error message, and it sent a error back up to our our program here in main. We have received that message and checked whether it's error or not. If it is error, we're going to set errors occurred to true. And then we'll set all of these to work like this. So if errors, if not errors occurred, then go ahead and execute this step. And the same for the rest of them. And there we go. That one. 
looks pretty good there. And then we'll just each of these steps only execute if no errors have occurred. And then we'll change the rest of these to also take their output and figure out if it's an error. If so, tell the rest of the app not to execute by setting that errors occurred flag. So if J session ID is that, if JSON data is an error, if CSV data is an error, and if write to file output is an error. And then right at the very end, we can do another check, and just as a final indication for our program. So it has output. We can say, if not errors occurred, then system.out.print line success else whoops uh, else failure okay now we have some error handling in place each function is printing out is going to print out its own error message and then tell the rest of the app that an error has occurred so that nothing else runs this is very basic. Let's see if it works. Save. We'll go to automate. It uh, it runs. So um, success. The whole thing worked. Oh, you know what? I didn't get though. Was any output that told me what? So the failure case works. The success case didn't didn't work. So at the bottom of each function, then I'll also just print out line. Um, We'll just print out some debug output. And there we go. So um, we'll do this at the bottom of every every function before we return its result. We'll just print this debug output. Command S because I'm on a Mac. And back here. Automate. Ah, there we are, our login response from JIRA itself. So we've called an API and got some data back. And, uh, and there's our J session ID. And we can use that to authenticate future requests. So that is it for, um, for really adding some error handling and debug output to our application. Uh, and I think in the next episode, then we'll move on to parsing out this J session ID and saving it away so we can use it in later requests. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next episode.